You have a protector, a defender, a deliverer. The Most High God is the guardian of your soul. When he breathed life into you, he didn't just put you on the earth and say, good luck, you're on your own. He said, I'm going to push back forces of darkness. I'm going to hide you from enemies. I'm going to shield you from trouble. Thanks for letting us come into your homes. We are praying for you and your family. While we can't gather in person, I hope you'll stay connected with us throughout the week through social media, podcasts, or any of our online platforms. If you've never visited our YouTube channel, it's the easiest and quickest way to access all these messages. But thanks for being with us. Let's get started with our confession. Say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I want to talk to you today about the guardian of your soul. When we look at all that's going on in the world, it's easy to live worried and afraid. We watch the news, see conflict between nations, natural disasters, sickness, accidents. If that's not enough, now we're dealing with this pandemic. What if I get sick? What if my business doesn't make it? What if my child has an accident? All these concerns are valid. If you were on your own, you would have a good reason to live worried. But the scripture says you have turned to your shepherd, the guardian of your soul. You're not in this by yourself. You have a protector, a defender, a deliverer. The Most High God is the guardian of your soul. When he breathed life into you, he didn't just put you on the earth and say, good luck, you're on your own. He said, I'm going to guard you. I'm going to push back forces of darkness. I'm going to hide you from enemies. I'm going to shield you from trouble. Psalm 91 says, God will rescue you from every trap and protect you from the fatal plague. You don't have to be afraid of this virus. God has a shield around you. He knows how to keep harm away. And if it does come, he knows how to heal you. He knows how to restore what was taken. He will rescue you from every danger. The enemy doesn't have the final say. Nothing can snatch you out of God's hands. Because you've turned to your shepherd, he's protected you from things you know nothing about. He kept that car from hitting you. He pushed back that sickness. He thwarted the plans of the enemy. He moved people out of the way. He's been guarding your soul since you were born. If you knew all the things he's already kept you from, you wouldn't worry about what you're facing now. You're in the palm of his hand. You're not at the mercy of fate, bad luck, or dreaded disease. You have a guardian, a protector, a God who promised he will rescue you from every trouble. When my father was a little toddler, barely able to walk, he lived on a farm with his family. One night he wandered away from everyone and fell into a fire. He could have easily been killed, but it just so happened that someone came walking by and pulled him out. Another 15 seconds, and that could have stopped his destiny. But there is a guardian of your soul. There is a God watching over you who will rescue you from trouble. He will stop the plan of the enemy. Psalm 121 says, Your guardian God is right by your side to protect you. He guards you when you leave, and he guards you when you return. He guards you now, and he will guard you always. You can't go anywhere without your guardian God. That's why we can live from a place of peace, a place of rest. Even though there's turmoil all around us, people worried, panicked, stay in peace. It's not a surprise to God. He didn't say we wouldn't have trouble, that we wouldn't have to face these things. But he did promise he will rescue you from the trap, and he will keep the fatal plague from taking you. You don't have to live worried about your future, afraid of what could happen. God has a hedge of protection around you, 
a bloodline that the enemy cannot cross. When the Israelites had been in slavery for many years, God told Moses he was going to bring them out. The way God did it was to send plagues on Pharaoh and his people that were oppressing them. What's interesting is that the Israelites lived next door, but none of the plagues affected them. God sent swarms of locusts. They ate up all of Pharaoh's crops, destroyed their food supply. But right next door, the Israelites' crops were untouched. I can imagine some of the locusts started to fly toward the Israelites. But when they got close, just like an electric fence, they suddenly turned around and left them alone. This happened with plague after plague. God said in Exodus, I will make a distinction between my people and Pharaoh's people. At one point, all of Pharaoh's livestock suddenly died, but right next door, the Israelites' livestock was perfectly fine. That's because God put a shield around his people. Even though the plague was all around them, he kept them from harm. Just like with the Israelites, because you belong to God, because you honor him, he's put a distinction on you. What would defeat others won't be able to defeat you. When business is going down, you're going to go up. When others are struggling, you're going to be prospering. That's why David said, a thousand may fall at my side, but it will not come near me. David understood this principle, that what happened to others wasn't going to happen to him. God put a distinction on him. I don't mean this arrogantly, like we're glad somebody else has difficulty and not us. I'm talking about living from a place of faith, knowing that you have an advantage. God has a shield around you. Psalm 91 in the Message Translation says, God protects you from deadly hazards. Even though others succumb all around you, you will stand untouched. You will watch it all from a distance. Because God is your refuge, evil can't get close to you, harm can't get through the door. You may have some things come to the door, but it's not going to get in. You're going to come out untouched. You're going to watch it all from a distance. You remember the rapper McHammer? He had a popular song called You Can't Touch This. You need to see yourself that way. When sickness comes, instead of accepting it, you need to announce to the enemy, you can't touch this. I am God's property. My body is a temple of the Most High. I will live and not die. When lack and struggle come, saying you'll never get ahead, just announce, you can't touch this. The favor of God is on my life. I will prosper even in a pandemic. When your children are making good decisions, they're getting off course instead of being depressed, thinking, what did I do wrong? You need to remind the enemy, you can't touch this. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. My children will be mighty in the land. You need to see yourself as untouchable to the enemy. We all have difficulties. I'm not saying that you won't have to face opposition, betrayals. They may come, but they don't have to stay. You don't have to answer the door. Don't open it up and say, I knew you'd show up. Come on in, let me get you a cup of coffee. No, when it knocks, say, no, you're not welcome here. Quit calling it my sickness, my anxiety, my dysfunction, my addiction. It's not yours. None of it belongs to you. It's on foreign territory. Your body is a temple of the Most High. Sickness doesn't belong in your temple. Depression doesn't belong in your temple. Fear and addictions don't belong there. Stand firm and keep that door closed. Things may come against you. I'm not asking you to deny the facts or act like you don't have a sickness, but you don't have to accept it in your mind. Don't let it become permanent or think it is always going to be that way. It's temporary. This too shall pass. I have several friends who have contracted the coronavirus. They fought the good fight of faith. When you face a sickness or a bad break, that doesn't mean you don't have this distinction or you must not have enough faith. Not at all. 
Uh, the scripture says rain falls on the just and the unjust. There are times when difficulties come, we're praying and believing, but it didn't work out our way. When it rains, don't get discouraged. Don't give up on your dreams. God knows what he's doing. If you keep the right attitude, that rain is not going to hinder you. It's going to cause you to blossom. The enemy may have meant it for your harm, but the reason God allowed it is so he can bring you out better than you were before. Psalm 91 starts off by saying, If you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, you will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The next verse says, I will say of the Lord, you are my refuge. It's significant that the psalmist didn't just say, I'm going to stay in the secret place, and that will keep me protected. He said, I will say of the Lord. What you're saying is going to make a difference in whether you see God's protection. Don't go around saying, I'll probably get this virus. I always have bad breaks. I don't think my business is going to make it or my children are never going to do what's right. You need to zip that up. You are opening the door to difficulty. If you're going to activate this protection, you can't go around talking defeat. You have to do like the psalmist and start saying of the Lord, Lord, thank you that you're my refuge. Thank you that you're shielding me from every plague, rescuing me from every trap. Thank you that I'm going to come out of this untouched. The way you're going to see the distinction is by declaring you're protected and thanking God that there's a hedge around. You, David had all kinds of opposition. He had people trying to kill him, armies coming against him. His own son tried to dethrone him. He could have lived defeated, complaining, God, you anointed me. Why am I having all these difficulties? No, listen to how David talked in Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord protects me from danger. Why should I be afraid? When enemies come against me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army surrounds me, I will remain confident. For in the time of trouble, God will hide me. He will place me out of reach, high on a rock. David knew how to activate this protection. You have to thank God for his protection. You can't go around playing panic and expect to see this hedge. David was living on the run from King Saul. He had been good to Saul, was his armor bearer, served him faithfully. But Saul was jealous of David. He could see the favor on David's life. He couldn't handle the thought of someone getting more attention than him. So even though David had done nothing wrong, Saul was trying to kill him. He was obsessed with it, chasing David again and again through the desert. Saul had the most skilled warriors. He had people who were specialists in tracking others. Here David was a shepherd. He didn't have any special training like Saul's men. Surely they could find David, Surely they could track him. But verse after verse says, Saul hunted David day after day, but God did not let him be found. God knows how to hide you from the enemy. He knows how to hide you from trouble. He can hide you from the virus. He will place you out of reach from the opposition. Saul was so frustrated that he went back home. Later, some of David's men contacted Saul's people and gave them David's location and all the details of where he was. It's always like this. Someone finally has mercy on Saul saying, help me get rid of this man that's trying to take my throne. David wasn't trying to take Saul's place. Now, he was trying to take it out on David. When you're doing the right thing and people are coming against you, trying to push you out. Don't worry, that's not your battle. There's a guardian of your soul. You have a protector, a defender. You don't have to fight. Stay on that high road and God will keep you out of harm's way. He will hide you when you need to be hidden. He's not going to let that adversity stop your destiny. Don't live upset, angry or trying to pay people back. 
Let God be your defender. He knows how to take care of the opposition. Saul told his men to go back and spy on David, study his movements, find out when he eats, when he sleeps, and where he gets food. Saul was so determined to catch David that he had them go overboard and do this surveillance. David didn't know some of his men had betrayed him. He thought he was in a great hiding place, but he looked up and saw Saul quickly closing in. There was no way he could escape. Saul was right on the other side of the mountain with all of his army, just a matter of hours before David would be captured. I can imagine David saying, God, I didn't see this coming. I never dreamed my own men would turn on me. But God, I believe you will rescue me from every trap. I know even when trouble surrounds me, you will bring me safely through. When he could have been panicked, giving up, he kept thanking God for his protection, thanking him that he would make a way. Right when Saul was about to give the command for that final capture, a man came riding a horse as fast as he could. He had an urgent message for the king. He handed it to Saul. It said, hurry home. The Philistines are attacking our land. So Saul called off the chase and ordered his men to turn around and go full speed back home. God has ways to protect you that you've never thought of. He knows how to distract the enemy. He controls the universe. You don't have to figure out how it's going to happen. All you have to do is believe. Lord, thank you that you're my protector. Thank you that you're my defender. Thank you that you're my waymaker. When you realize the Most High God is guarding you, then you can say with David, I will fear no evil. I'm not going to fear this virus. I'm not going to fear this opposition. I'm not going to fear my future. You can stay in peace, knowing that the God who created the universe is the guardian of your soul. Jesus said in Matthew that in the last days, there will be terrible epidemics and earthquakes, but don't panic or give in to your fears. An epidemic is a worldwide virus, like we're facing today. It didn't surprise God. He didn't bring you this far to leave you. Now, choose to live from a place of faith, not a place of fear. When you're in peace, that's a position of power. When you know God is in control, you're going to be strong. You're going to feel a force sustaining you. But when you're upset and afraid, that's going to drain your energy and motivation. Your immune system is not going to be as effective as it should be. There's a lot of negativity in the world. People are worried, afraid, and panicked. I know the threat is real, but don't let that get inside of you. A ship doesn't sink because of the water around it. It can be in a huge ocean surrounded by hundreds of miles of water on every side. Water around it is not a problem, but if that ship lets what's on the outside get on the inside, then it sinks. You can't watch the news all day and stay afloat. If you constantly take in the negative, you're going to sink. I like to watch the news. It's important to stay informed. But after 15 minutes, I know what I need to know. If you leave that television on all day, it's going to take us six weeks to get you out of that pit. Tune it out and tune in to what God says about you. Don't let what's on the outside get on the inside. The scripture says, think on things that are pure things that are wholesome, things that are of a good report. Find something to watch that's uplifting, something inspiring. Think on things that will build your faith. This is not the time to call negative family members and talk about all the doom and gloom and how bad it is that's poisoning your spirit. It's going to pull you down. One of the best things you can feed yourself is what God says about you. Lord, thank you that my latter days will be better than my former. Thank you that what you started in my life, you will finish. Thank you that you are the guardian of my soul. When I first started ministering back in 1999, it was all very new to me. I had been behind the scenes for 17 years, and I was suddenly thrust in front of a large audience. 
I never dreamed the ministry would grow. People began to watch all over the world. Well, with the growth in notoriety came opposition. On top of that, I had the pressure of trying to learn how to minister. I wasn't sure if I was good at it. At one point it felt overwhelming. It seemed like there was opposition from every side. I wasn't sure how things were going to work out. One night, I had a dream. It was so vivid, I can remember it like it was yesterday. I was running through this field as fast as I could. There were planes flying overhead, very low, dropping bombs all around me. It was like it was right out of a war zone. I could see the bombs falling so close that when they did, I would brace and just wait for the shrapnel to hit me. The bomb wouldn't be 15 feet away, and the explosion was deafening. I was waiting to die. But every time, somehow, the shrapnel would miss me. This happened four or five times in this dream. I was amazed that I was still alive. I ended up running to this little house. I was hiding in this room, very afraid. The soldiers came passing by. I could hear them running. I was hoping they wouldn't check the house, praying that they would keep going. Then my worst fear happened. They came inside looking for me. They had their guns drawn. I was standing right in front of them. I thought, this is it. They've found me. It's the end. They looked right at me, then turned around and walked out. It was like I was invisible. When I woke up, I felt God say, you can have bombs going off all around you, but I have you in the palm of my hand. When you trust in me, no weapon formed against you will ever prosper. Now, when things come against me and I'm tempted to be worried or afraid, I just remind myself, God is the guardian of my soul. He has a hedge of protection around me, a bloodline that the enemy cannot cross. You may feel like bombs are exploding around you, things that should stop your business, damage your family, or harm your health. Don't worry, it's not going to be what it looks like. Those bombs are not going to take you out. It may be loud and it may seem like you're in danger, but what you can't see is that the guardian of your soul is shielding you. He's going to rescue you from trouble. God knows how to make you invisible to the enemy. The same God that made blind eyes see can make seeing eyes blind. He has all kinds of ways to protect you. That's what happened in 2 Kings, chapter 6. Syrian army came and surrounded Elisha's house. They were upset because God kept telling Elisha what the Syrians were going to do. What they discussed in secret, God revealed to Elisha, and he always stayed one step ahead. When the Syrian king found out it was the prophet, Elisha, he was furious. He sent a huge army to go capture him. When Elisha saw them coming, he said in verse 18, Lord, please just make them blind. Elisha went out and said, I heard you're looking for Elisha. He's not here. You're in the wrong city. Follow me and I'll take you to him. He led this huge army right into the middle of Israel's camp. Then Elisha prayed, Lord, open their eyes and let them see. When they realized where they were and how they had been captured, they nearly fainted. God has ways to protect you that you've never thought of. He can make you invisible to that virus, invisible to that person who's trying to stop you, invisible to the opposition. You don't have to figure it out. All you have to do is believe. Just stay in the secret place. Stay close to God. Keep thanking Him that He's protecting you, that He's defending you, that He's the guardian of your soul. I read about a small fish called the Moses soul. It's a little flounder found in the Red Sea. Also in those waters are large sharks. These sharks typically like to eat this kind of fish. But in the early 70s, a group of researchers noticed something fascinating about this little fish. 
all the other fish in the same category, the same size and weight, would be eaten by the sharks. But they discovered that the sharks weren't eating this particular Moses' soul. It's because it has a very unique defense. When it's in any kind of danger, it naturally secretes poisonous toxins out of its glands. These toxins literally cause the shark's jaws to freeze. I saw a picture of this little fish swimming right in the middle of a shark's mouth. The shark had obviously come in for the kill. All he had to do was bite down and he'd have dinner. The only problem was he couldn't do it. God put something in this little fish that as long as it was close, the shark's jaws were frozen. Like this small fish, God has put something on you that will keep the enemy from defeating you. What you're up against may seem big, stronger, and more powerful. But don't worry, it can't touch you. God has a hedge of protection around you. The way you release these toxins that cause the shark's jaws to freeze, to freeze, so to speak, is by thanking God. Every time you say, Lord, thank you that you're my shield, thank you that you're my defender, thank you that you're the guardian of my soul, toxins are released that paralyze the enemy. Now, don't go around verbalizing, I'm worried about this. I'm afraid my child is going to get off track. My business is going to go downhill. Negative talk is like bait. It attracts the enemy. It will make things worse. The way you activate God's protection is with words of faith. Think about this little fish. When he's in the shark's mouth, his blood pressure doesn't go up. He doesn't call 911. He doesn't get depressed and think, this is the end. He just goes about his business. He knows there's something special about him that God ordained from the foundation of the world so he would be protected from those predators. So, he just rests in who God made him to be. If you can get this down in your spirit, that the Most High God is the guardian of your soul, that he's put something on you that makes you untouchable to the enemy, then you don't have to go through life afraid, wondering how it's going to work out. Live from a place of peace, a place of faith, knowing that your guardian God is watching over you. If you do this, I believe and declare that what God promised will come to pass. He will rescue you from every trap, protect you from every plague, and make you invisible to the enemy. Because God is your refuge, evil can't get close to you. Harm can't get through the door. You are untouchable in Jesus' name. And if you receive it, can you say Amen today? Well, I'd like to give you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Would you pray with me? Just pray, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I'll make you my Lord and Savior. If you prayed that simple prayer, we believe you got born again. We'd like to give you some resources to help you on your journey of faith. Just text the number on the screen. Get in a good Bible-based church and keep God first. Thanks for watching this message. I hope you enjoyed it. We upload new videos every week to keep you inspired and encouraged. So don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to our channel. Let us know in the comments below how this message has encouraged you. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear from you. We're praying for you and your family. We'll see you next time.